Hi, my name's John Lampy. I'm a licensed pesticide applicator. This video is about killing weeds in a garden. The key thing about a garden is that the weeds are intermixed with desirable plants, i.e. your garden plants. You need to be able to apply the weed killer so you don't harm the desirable plants. Precision, therefore, is essential. The herbicide dispensing system we'll be talking about today is from Green Shoots. That system, the small foam herbicide dispenser package, contains everything you need to do a precision application of a weed killer. I work for Green Shoots. I think we have a great system for doing precision herbicide applications. However, even if you don't use our products, you will still find the advice we give you in this video helpful. The Green Shoots small foam herbicide dispenser package contains the following. First, a glyphosate concentrate. This can be mixed at different strengths depending on the kind of application you are doing. Second, blue foaming agent. The blue colorant will mark every weed you have treated so you don't have to retreat the same weed over and over. Third, the system creates foam herbicide. The advantages of foam herbicide are that it stays wet longer to increase absorption by the weed's vascular system, and the foam clings tenaciously to plant surfaces to reduce drippage. I also want to say a little bit more about why I like to use glyphosate as the active ingredient. First, it works on most perennial species. This includes grasses. Second, it binds tightly to soils. This helps limit the damage that can be done to non-target plants. Third, it breaks down relatively quickly in the soil. This reduces the potential harm it can cause to the broader environment. One word of caution, glyphosate is non-selective. That means it'll harm any plant that it touches. That's why it's important to use a precision application technique with glyphosate. Now let me describe two techniques for killing perennial weeds in a garden. The first technique is an herbicide wiping technique. This will be demonstrated in a video. Hi, my name's John Lampy from Green Shoots. Today, I'm going to do another demonstration on how to use the Green Shoots foam herbicide system to do a precision herbicide application. The target weed is this perennial south thistle. Perennial south thistle is an invasive, invasive and noxious weed. It has a, an extensive system of underground stems or rhizomes like this. This makes it very difficult to kill. As you can see, I pulled this one out of the ground and broke off the rhizome. That broken off rhizome will regenerate another shoot. And that makes it very difficult to kill uh, by mechanical methods such as pulling. So we're gonna use the dispenser. I'm gonna apply small amounts of herbicide to the leaves and stem of the plant like this. Now you don't have to apply very much of the herbicide. In fact, you can cover as little as 10% of the weed. I'm using a glyphosate concentrate with about 10, over 10% 10 active ingredient. The technique I'm using is an herbicide wiping technique and that allows you to, to place uh, very precise amounts of herbicide on the leaves. Hi, John Lampy here. We're gonna check up on an application that we did earlier on some sow thistle. As you can see, that sow thistle is completely dead. It's a little hard to make out because it is so brown. Uh, same thing here. 
wiped out. Uh, this little one here you can barely see, but it's also dead. So, looks like we had a complete kill using the Green Shoots foam herbicide system. What are the herbicide rates you should use for herbicide wiping? I would recommend a pretty high label rate, but not as high as sometimes is recommended on the label for wiping. The reason for that is uh, those high label rates can result in burning of the foliage. So the rates I recommend here are a little bit lower, typically between 1 and 8% active ingredient. And with those rates, you only need to cover about 10 to 30% of the foliage. Now, you cover closer to 30% of the foliage when using a lower lo label rate and closer to 10% of the foliage when using a slightly higher label rate, i.e. 8% uh, active ingredient. The second technique I'm going to talk about is called the cut stump technique. With the cut stump technique, you cut the stem close to the ground, about one inch above the ground, or maybe a little more, leaving a stump like the one shown in the photos. This is a Canada thistle stem. This technique works especially well for tall weeds and for woody stems. If you apply any kind of herbicide to tall weeds, there's a greater chance that the herbicide will drip onto the desirable plants below. The technique, the cut stem technique, eliminates that risk. For the cut stem technique, you do want to use a concentrated glyphosate mix, one that contains about 20% active ingredient. In terms of timing, i.e. what time of year should you do the application? Here's what I advise. For purposes of weed control, I break weeds into these categories shown in this slide. Now this looks a little complicated, but it really isn't as you'll see in the next slide. Just remember that for biennial and annual weeds, you should do an application when the plant is younger, i.e. the younger the better. That's because both of, the, both of these uh, types of weeds are prolific seed producers and you want to avoid that at all costs. Perennial weeds are a bit more complicated. I divide them into three categories. For frost sensitive weeds, you should apply late in the year, but before a frost. Weeds that are frost sensitive include crown vetch, knotweeds, and bindweed, and many other weeds too. For moderately sensitive, uh, frost sensitive weeds, you can apply herbicide even after a frost. These include weeds like Canada thistle and many grasses. For woody species, you can apply in late fall and even winter. Late winter is a great time. Just do it before the buds start to swell in the spring. You can also treat some biennial and perennial rosettes in very early spring. This has to be done before the plant starts to bolt. Very early spring can be a great time to apply to species like Canada thistle because many of your desirable plants have not greened up at this time. That's it. We'd love to have you subscribe to our channel. Also, we'd greatly appreciate it if you would like this video. Finally, we hope you are able to get outside and control non-native invasive weeds in your garden and in natural areas near you.